BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, is just a branch off of the anti-Israel movement that seeks to disconnect Israel from the rest of the world. In other words, it is an isolation strategy. BDS on campus seeks to pass resolutions on the student government level, which proclaim the university's divestment from Israel, economically, but also culturally. However, no campus has actually ever divested from Israel, since the students do not get to dictate such decisions for the school. Hypothetically speaking, even if a school divested from Israel, how much money is a campus invested in Israel in the first place that it would actually impact the Jewish state? The problem for me is not if BDS resolution passes on a student government level. The problem is that BDS has become a popular topic and is now part of political discourse on campus. If a student government passes a BDS, it only shows that the current student board is sympathetic to those trying to counter Israel's right to exist. But this is a side effect of the real and deeper problem, the fact that anti-Semitism is spreading like wildfire amongst the political class of the world's younger generation. Passing bills in Congress or lobbying student representatives against BDS is like putting a band-aid on a wound that urgently needs surgery. Regardless of BDS passing or not, it is working. We must change and influence the student body so that BDS or any other acronym against Jews are not taken seriously. BDS is not a movement. It is just a branch off of a larger tree, usually referred to as anti-Semitism or anti-Zionism. A larger movement that seeks to completely destroy the idea that Jews have a right to self-determine in their native homeland, or that they are even a people, while simultaneously promoting the idea that Jews are attackable, inhuman creatures and the root of all problems. The anti-Israel students on campus have taken on the role of attacking Jewish identity and rights, and have taken Hitler's playbook and applied it to this generation. How do they convince people to hate Jews? By dehumanizing them and making Jews in Israel the source of all society's problems. Today's youth, and the next generation to roam the planet, has already accepted that targeting Jews or Jewish rights is okay, and Israel, in too many circles, has become associated to everything they hate and fear. If someone asks you why Israel has a right to exist, don't you dare say tech, democracy, cherry tomatoes, holocaust, or the Bible. Those very answers are the reason why too many do not understand nor respect Israel's right to exist. The Jewish self-determination movement was never rooted or based on the vision of creating tech or tiny tomatoes for your salad. Do not answer the question with material accomplishments that make you feel subjectively proud. Thailand is a monarchy, yet no one debates the Thai people's right to self-determination. So do not answer Israel's the only democracy in the Middle East as an excuse for legitimacy. Yes, without a holocaust, Israel may have never been created because Jews would have stayed in the diaspora and continuously made excuses for why they were more needed there rather than being back home. However, wanting to have a safe space of our own is not a valid reason for moving to and liberating the Levant region from the British and raising our flag. Jews could have gone anywhere else, but they didn't because Zionism was greater than just creating a state. It was about returning to Zion and joining the Jews that had never left. So why does Israel have a right to exist? Israel is the story of a 4,000-year-old indigenous people who were mostly persecuted from their native lands by Western imperial powers, yet maintained a constant presence in that land and were persecuted in the diaspora for thousands of years. And through it all, they eventually created the most successful indigenous liberation movement that ever existed. This movement was called Zionism. Many campuses have pro-Israel and anti-Israel groups. Think of them like sports teams. One side is practicing and marketing their team to gain more fans while working out at the gym to get stronger and building more allies for a more powerful team. This is what the anti-Israel side is doing. While the pro-Israel team is on the sideline bench talking to themselves quietly about how their jerseys were made with Israeli technology and this is why their team deserves to win. I mean, come on, what do you expect will happen on campuses and in the future if this continues? It is up to us to stand up. Never again does not mean it will never happen again. It means we took the commitment to make sure it never happens again. I'm Rudy Rockman, and you're watching JTV.